Steffi here and today you're going to be painting with me this beautiful swan in watercolour and um, lots of exciting things happening in the background and some really fun things going on in this one including splatter and some salt resist technique as well so that should be great. I also just wanted to remind you that on my YouTube channel you will also find a full length tutorial on how to paint this pretty a colourful zebra, she's really sweet. Um, so I'll put a link below this video so that you can have a look at that as well. I also have a full length tutorial on how to paint this beautiful bird too. So um, it'll show you from start to finish. You'll have lots of information on different techniques and things like that on how to get started, how to put your image onto the watercolour paper to begin with, the reference image is supplied and your uh, workshop is broken down into separate videos so it's really really easy to follow. So let's get started on our swan. So I'll just go through all the different materials that we'll be using in this workshop. Um, first of all you're going to need a sheet of watercolour paper, preferably a 300 gram um, or 140 pounds is always best to use. You want some masking tape to secure it to a board to keep it in position while you're painting. We're going to be adding quite a lot of water and washes so by taping it down it's going to help prevent it from cockling on the surface. You're also going to need some brushes. I have a selection here. I have a number 18 um, wash brush. This is a sable brush. I use this one mainly for applying water to the surface of the paper. I also have a number 12 round synthetic brush and a number six sable round brush so that will be used to apply the sort of the, the finer details to the painting. You'll also need some paint. I have my small palette here and it has cadmium yellow, cadmium red, ultramarine blue, lemon yellow, alizarin crimson and cerulean blue. So I have three primary warm colours and three primary cool colours set up in my palette ready to go. You're also going to need some areas for mixing, so some fairly large wells will be very useful for this painting. You will need two pots of water, one um, sep kept separate and clean for adding water to our paints uh, to create the washes, and another larger glass jar or something similar to hold water for cleaning your brush always best to keep those two separate otherwise you tend to muddy your colours. You will need a strip of watercolour paper, this is actually, I usually use an old painting that perhaps hasn't gone well or a warm up piece that I cut down into strips and I use that for testing colours before I apply them to my painting so that's a little handy tip there. You will need a pencil, a sharpened pencil, this is just a HB one, a graphite stick or something similar um, for transferring the reference image onto your paper. I also have a putty rubber just in case there are any smudges or mistakes then I can erase them really easily with a putty rubber. We will be using masking fluid um, to mask off some areas of the edges of the um, if I show you the reference image here, some of the feathers. So we don't want our background to disturb the edges of these beautiful feathers on the wing of the swan there. So we'll be using masking fluid for that. We will also be using a little bit of table salt, just ordinary everyday table salt to create a lovely effect. And finally, you'll need some kitchen paper towel or something like that to wipe off the paint from your brush. And that's everything, so let's move into the painting. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to transfer the image of the swan onto the watercolour paper. And I use a really simple technique for this. So shifting my paper to one side, I turn the reference image over and using my graphite stick, I scribble across the surface, just of the swan, we don't need any background really. So just quickly scribbling across there, it leaves a layer of graphite which 
we will press through and trace through and that will leave lines on the watercolour paper. So you can check that you've, yep, yeah, hold it up to the light, check that you've got every aspect that you need of the swan. We do want some individual feathers on his wings, so I want to make sure that that's covered nicely. Um, and there we go, that should be absolutely fine to go ahead with. So now that we've covered the swan, just check again and put to the light, that's absolutely fine. You can bring back the drawing board with the paper on. We line up the image where we want it. So I'm going to have him here, which is about central to my paper. Um, a little tip here is just to take a small piece of masking tape and just tape it to one of the top corners and this will hold it in position while you're tracing it through. So I've got my sharpened HB pencil and I'm going to carefully trace with a little bit of pressure around my swan. So take your time doing this. You want to get the proportions correct so that it looks realistic, obviously. And initially we're just going around the very outside edge of him. And then in a few moments we will look at individual feathers that we want to add detail to. So just sticking with this outside edge for the time being, just transferring that over. What you can do part way around is just check that the lines are pushing through onto the paper and leaving a clear trace for you to paint with. Obviously you don't want to do all this and then remove your picture and find that none of the lines have been transferred so it's always good just to have a quick check before you get too far. So I'm just coming around his neck here, beautiful long curve and the top of his head. It's important to get the eye and the beak right, so just take your time around that. I'm going to draw the line that separates the top part of his beak from the bottom part, and I'm also drawing around the black patch that, that covers his eye, and there's a little dark section, nostril, just there on the top of his beak, so I've added that in as well, just to check that that's transfer through. That's great. Now I'm going to just do the back wing as well. We mustn't forget that one. Just tracing it through. It's a great technique to use for any painting if you want to get proportions and scale right. Otherwise if you feel um, confident enough then by all means freehand draw your picture um, that's fantastic. I just find this speeds up the process a little bit and it makes approaching a painting a little bit less daunting. Um, what I'm going to do now is these gorgeous feathers here on the edge of his wing just want to make a note of where they sort of overlap. So I'm just drawing those lines in there. Simplifying it a little bit, there is a lot of texture on the edges of each of these feathers. Well, I'm, I'm simplifying that a little bit here. Um, there we go, that's lovely. Um, and I just want to indicate where this light patch meets the shadow there as well quite important I think where the, the light is hitting the bird and it shows it's three-dimensional 
aspects and um, that really helps throughout a painting. Um, and I'm not going to worry too much about the other shadows within this. Um, we can paint those quite easily, I think. Um, possibly just draw in that, that line just here where the wing is kind of bending on itself, back on itself. And yes, I think I'm happy with that. Let's just take a look at the drawing. It's a tiny little bit of the beak that didn't trace. I'm just going to go over any of those lines that are a little bit faint. The other thing you can do is if you find your lines are a bit too dark and you don't want, really want to see these lines once your painting's completed, so you can always just lighten those lines a little bit with the putty rubber just by gently rubbing the surface. Don't scrub at the surface with the putty rubber or any other rubber because you'll damage the surface of the paper um, and it will affect the way the water and the paint is absorbed on the surface so you'll end up with strange marks appearing so don't do that just just gently rub around those edges just to lighten them up so you'll probably find now that you can't see that very clearly on the camera but believe me I can see it from where I'm sitting just a reminder to you um, you'll have the option to download the reference image. I will give you a PDF version of that so you can print it at home and use that as reference. Um, I'll also give you a PDF of my drawn bird. So if you were struggling with a trace technique, you could have a line drawing of mine and just simply trace that. And my final painting, I'll give you a copy of that as well. That will help a little bit as you, as you go along. So let's um, start the next step of the painting.